Um, I didn't want to start the podcast like this, but unfortunately, the inevitable has happened. Um, and I don't want to make it a downer, so I'm trying to spin it into a positive. Um, but Beth is not here. Ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding and welcome the Unfiltered Bride podcast. Tips from the top table and beyond. So you know it's going to be juicy. So it's not fully my fault. Um, and I do want you to continue listening to the episode, but it's mainly the fault of the people that came to the Cardiff and Manchester tours um, because you killed her. <laughs> um, she is literally dying of some kind of illness that you guys have given her. And we came together as, as a duo and we're like, dude, what is happening? Because we can't miss an episode because I feel like you'd all disown us. So I asked the next best person, and they weren't available, so I got Brian. <laughs> hey! <Wee. laughs> um, hello, Brian. Hi, Georgie. Um, somebody on the comments didn't know who you were. Would you like to just reintroduce yourself? Um, no. <laughs> because if you're listening and you don't know who I am... Stop listening. Uh, yeah. Well, they're obviously not listening, are they? Yeah, we do talk about you quite a lot, to be fair. You do come up. Um, and that was just on an Instagram story yeah what well, can we have a little mini reintroduction so that this episode makes sense if somebody randomly joins on this episode let's make it make sense please okay uh, also stop doing your like chill voice you're not calm or sexy so just be normal i'm absolutely normal um, <laughs> my name is brian i am this podcast uh, producer editor no, i am also your husband that was the one i wanted to start yeah, with i'm also your husband um so i'm assuming we're going to talk about drinks in this episode to some degree yeah um so I have an extensive background in drinks. You do? I was a bartender for like probably nearly 10 years, bar management, um, trained a lot of bartenders, worked a lot of different bars and- Make a mean cocktail, um, don't you? I think so. No. So I'm told. Hype. So we I'm need, told. Like I'm used to sitting here with Beth who sings at stuff. I well, need better hype than this, Brian. Okay. Um, well, if, you, <laughs> if you're having alcohol at your wedding and you like drinks and you want to impress your guests with drinks, then hopefully I can be of some- no, stop it. No, no, no. This is a this is a podcast. This is like if you want to have a drink or a good experience at your wedding, I am the person to tell you how to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I am. I'll be hype, you answer the questions, okay? I'm not good at selling myself, Georgie. No, I know, but you need to be. I'm very British in the sense I'm You're not even I'll, British, I'll, yeah, bro. You're South African. That's one thing I've I've uh, inherited from being in England <laughs> is self-deprecation. It's bullshit, right? Yeah. I have I've put a thing on the stories. We've got loads of questions that have come in. There's questions about drink, drink specifically, questions, yeah. yeah. There's questions about how you bagged such a banging wife. Um How did they know I've got a second wife? <laughs> That's illegal. And you were a police officer, so you know that. Um, but also like husbandy questions and life questions. So I feel like we start with drinks and okay. then we move on to the other bits. Okay? Okay. So I need your full... Is this quick fire questions? No, or these, I don't think it's quick fire. Some, uh, no, a bit of effort, please. Okay. okay, so can we, first of all, before I find the questions, can we have some background on your drinks knowledge? Like where have you learned cocktails? So I started my career at 18 at TGI Fridays, which whoop, whoop. if... Um, you now go to TGI Fridays, you probably don't, but if you do, <laughs> you realise it's gone pretty shit. No, um, that's, that makes me sad though. Yeah, it makes me sad too, because when I joined, it was, well, it started as a cocktail bar in New York, and then when it came to England, it was like renowned for cocktails. Service, it was yeah. a bar and then a restaurant second, and then they introduced kids parties, and it's now, over time, become a kids restaurant. When I was there, it was kind of fading out, but it was still good enough that they had competitions and stuff like that. So I started as just a bartender and there were three different levels of bartending at TGR Fridays. It was like a certified bartender. You had to know like 150 cocktails and you had to be competent enough to do like a test to pass it. Um, then there was a second level called 100 Club, which is an extra 100 cocktails and you had to prove that you were better than the other bartenders essentially. And then... There was a third level called Master Bartender, which at the time seemed like quite a crazy idea because I I didn't know anybody who was one, and there like was there actually wasn't TGIs. any in the U, in the UK, mainly because they weren't pushing it. Um, but I had the opportunity to do it, and when I did it, there was only seven of us in the UK, so I passed that, and that was like I had to know six hundred and fifty cocktails roughly, like by heart. I had to get a hundred percent on a test. But he had to know like the glass, the quantity, the garnish, how you make it. Uh, 
25 mil vodka like the whole thing and the yeah. whole start of our relationship was testing well me testing him on cocktails and then tasting them which was great yeah so you had to be like be able to pour accurately and you have to test like many hours a day like and then i did competitions um because i spent so much time learning all the stuff i started doing competitions um never won always came second always a bridesmaid <laughs> never the bride do you like that it, was, it made sense for this podcast doesn't it? um so yeah i came second in the uk i can't remember the year i think it was 2012 um, yeah. in the bartending competition yeah. for the UK and that is my credentials so far I've got a, a world record for flaring you as do. well it's not a personal one so it's a bit of it's a, a group it's a bit of a cop record. out it's there again a, it's a bridesmaid thing there's a hundred of us all flaring at the same time <laughs> if you don't know what flaring is it's the bottle chucking that you see when you go to cocktail Good bars. bars yeah okay so we trust your judgment on cocktails and things is what we're saying um so first of all without me asking questions on here how important do you think cocktails are to a wedding I mean, it definitely depends on who you are as people because I've worked and been to weddings where beer is the most important thing and it wouldn't make sense to have cocktails. Yep. Um, for me and us, obviously, we've talked about in the last episode that I was on that we talked, we had cocktails. Obviously, we had to have had cocktails. Yeah. Um, so it would have been a pretty shit wedding on our behalf if we just served beer. Everyone would have been like, that makes Which no cocktails? sense. Yeah. Um, so I think I, I think for just like an average person where they, they don't have a preference either way towards having cocktails or not having the option of cocktails always makes it better agreed like it doesn't matter what wedding you go to and i've not been to a huge number as a guest but i've worked a lot of weddings and when you have an option for even if it's just like two or three cocktails um everybody gets in a better mood because i think like when you go to bars and it happens all the time uh, like we talk about this quite regularly these days i think because we're getting older we <laughs> hate bad service yeah yeah i think bad service ruins everything though yeah it does but like i think even working maybe it's because we worked in the service industry most of our life as well but now i just get so frustrated really quickly so if i go somewhere to a bar yeah. and they're shit to start with it just ruins the night so would you rather if somebody was worried about a venue and a bar do would you say to them don't have cocktails if you're concerned about the service of them yeah 100%. and yeah so so if they can't do cocktails well don't do them at all yeah yeah, definitely. And and like we've bought one thing we've certainly learned from doing this tour is that it doesn't matter how well prepared you are for bars, when there's a whole bunch of people willing to get drunk at the same time, you have to be prepared for it. Like yeah. you have to have, right, there's going to be 100 guests coming to this wedding and we're having cocktails. Many bartenders, if you go to like venues, they go, yeah, yeah, that's fine because they've not really thought through the process of, of like it. when this is actually going to happen. Yeah. Like they, just, they just think, oh, because we've got a couple of bartenders on at that time, we'll be fine. But I, like it breaks my heart every time I go to a wedding and I see it and you're like you guys have just done this so half assed you've understaffed it and yeah. it's put a domino effect of people getting annoyed because they're waiting on the bar and there's nothing worse like if you can if you can get drinks right at a wedding everything else I think goes well like cause it's, I mean it's, it's not promoting getting drunk here but like if you when you go to a wedding and you and you are a drinker if the drinks are good, you can forgive yeah, some yeah, other yeah. shit things. Like if yeah. the food's not amazing, but actually, and not even like the best quality drinks, just like good service, quick. Cold. Yeah, cold, yeah. Hot yeah. food, cold drinks. But the drinks part, I think, is really forgotten for a lot of people. I think more, less so now, I think people are focusing more on drinks. For, I don't know, I mean, maybe I'm biased because I'm seeing and I talk about it more with people, but it feels like people are focusing more and more on the drinks and rather than just the food. Yeah, I agree. I think drinks set the tone of a day like when i speak to couples there's some couples that i speak to that i'm like you don't like if it's not that important to you you just need to make sure you've got lots of drink there that people can have it if they want it they can buy their own blah blah blah. it's then other couples that you speak to that, where they're like we like hosting we like doing drinks like mm. those are the people that you've you have to get it right like it's so so easy to do it shit and then it's just there was no point doing it you should have just yeah. had loads of prosecco and not wasted the money and, and i think people tend to skimp on the drinks bit as well like even it, i understand if drink isn't important to you i get it but quite often it's like oh we'll just get a couple of bottles of wine and like a bottle of vodka or whatever and you think actually you, it's not that expensive to get enough alcohol i mean we spent like two grand at our wedding and we had tons of alcohol yeah. that's because we you know we didn't pay for corkage and we had our own venue so it was like we were in a privileged position in that sense but if you're in a position where you had like in a marquee or something like yeah. it's worth spending a bit of money on it alcohol. It breaks my heart when people get in a bar company to a marquee yeah. that costing, then charge you're such per a glass premium to have the same thing. Like they set up a tab. If you're going to marquee and you're having a bar, don't do the tab option. No. It just makes no sense because there's no corkage. I guess again, if you really don't care about drinking, you don't want the hassle, then fine, I get it. But you're gonna if you wanted to do the free bar, it makes no sense to be paying per glass for it. No. Crazy. No, no. Um, please, can you give me the top five cocktails? 
that you foresee for 2024? I think they've pretty much remained the same, weirdly, for the last few years. Like uh, the number one cocktail and has been ever since I've been a bartender, well, in a decent cocktail bar. This is after I worked at TJ Fridays and I worked in a slightly higher end bars. Espresso martini is hands down yeah. the cocktail. I hate espresso martinis. Yeah, but you don't like coffee. I know, but it makes I love them because they look bougie as hell and I appreciate them and I think they're a good post dinner pick me up. Yeah. But I'm just not about that coffee life. I mean, the numbers don't lie. <laughs> like most of the UK love it. And as soon yeah, as somebody has one of them, have it. everybody else sees it and they go, Oh my god, you do espresso martinis and then it's just like a domino effect and everyone's ordering them. So like if you're having, if you're going to have a, even if you don't like them yourself and you want to have cocktails at your wedding, that's the one I always say you need to yeah, have. Yeah, we did still have espresso martinis at our wedding to be yeah. fair. Would you do them? No, I'll come on to that. Carry on. Okay, espresso martinis one. Porn star martini as yeah. well. I would say is, is definitely up there. So passion fruit martini, porn star martini. What about like, I tell you what we did a few times last year is like a spicy margarita, but are they popular? Yeah. No, I wouldn't say it. margaritas are quite, quite niche. Like unless people really like tequila, which is not as common as liking vodka or gin and then another one that is probably like it's mainly in the summertime but you're seeing more and more often is an aperol spritz that's one yes. that's um they're pretty easy as well like in in terms of non-mixologists yeah an aperol's pretty easy isn't it yeah yeah it's, it's very similar to a hugo where you just like you're putting soda prosecco yeah. and then you're mixing it with something else um and then probably another classic summary again but you can have it all year round as a mojito that's yes. one that, like, again, you either love it or you hate it, but it's, it's on every cocktail menu everywhere. Fair. Yeah. Um, and then finally, one that isn't a cocktail technically, but is super common, is a gin and tonic. Having having that as an option, every wedding you ever work out, people want to. Yeah. It tends not to be on the menu, but people always ask for it. So, I'll say those are probably the five most common ones and menus that I create for, for brides and grooms. Would that um, cover all bases of people liking drinks? If you had just, say if you just had a small cocktail list, if you had those, does that tick off everybody's Pretty much. Taste? It has like slightly creamier coffee and then you have like fruitier. You could put something like a pina colada and that's a bit creamier, but it makes, that's quite niche. You're probably not going to sell that many of those unless yeah. it's like a, you know, a Caribbean-y style wedding in summer. Um, but then again, it, ma it makes sense if your favorite cocktail, like whenever I talk to people who are getting married and talk about drinks, it's, it's, it's very similar to what you say with like personalization of weddings. It's the same with drinks. Like if your favorite drinks are pina colada, then let's do something around that. Who cares yeah. if they, all your guests like pina coladas or not, we can create a menu that maybe, maybe it's like variations of a pina colada, but you got to make it like, you know, to do with what you yourself like. I agree. Thanks for promoting that, Brian. Um, where did Pims go? Pims um, has died, hasn't it? I wouldn't say it's died. It's died. I don't think I did any Pims last year. No. Whereas when I used to work in catering, what was that, five years ago? That was every time it was Pims We've and Prosecco. a couple of weddings last year that had Pims I don't remember many Pims. Yeah. I guess Aperol is the new Pims. Yeah, but Pims is good because you can just whack in a Kilner jar and it, people can help themselves. Yeah, that is, that's a really good way of speeding up the drink. Like if you have an arrival drinks, you can have like Prosecco and then have you know, a couple of Kilner jars filled with Pims and people, when you, once you've handed them one, they can go and top themselves up. So if you like, if if you're having a very British style wedding, I'd recommend Pims. Yeah, Pims works nicely in the garden. Like when everyone's out, lawn games, oh, Beth, Beth would hate this episode. Yeah. But not even, it's enough to be that. Like if we've done them <laughs> indoors, like in marquees, Pims work re yeah. know, works really well. Like Prosecco and Pims. Like you said, it's a good one that can be there. Again, if you're worried about your venue... And you don't trust the bar service yeah. of that. Pims is pretty hard to get wrong. I mean, it's wow, well, you can fuck it up, but it is quite hard to fuck it up. Like it's, it's literally the it's on the back of the Pims bowl. <laughs> isn't like, it fifty ratio one to two to one, one to three it? normally? Is it one two to, to one? Three. You're lying. Um, best gin cocktail. Best gin cocktail. Yeah. Um, for me, it would be bramble. I love a bramble. Yeah. You didn't, it's weird. I think I've grown up. I've made these drinks for you many times and you've never liked them and then you had it one time. You <laughs> no, know, I had it at some, a wedding. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, an open day or something and I was like, I've got a new favourite drink. Is it the one with Black, blackcurrant on top? Blackberry. Blackberry on top. Yeah. Bang in. They are good. Yeah, I enjoyed that a lot. But again, that's a cocktail that you can easily get wrong. So you need to try it before because you can either make it with fresh fruit or not fresh fruit. Sometimes it's really bitty. We're getting into the weeds of, 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 yeah. of cocktails here, but um, it's a good, it's, it's a nice gin cocktail. It's very fresh. What's very an summery. easier option of a, what's an easier option gin cocktail? Um, like a Singapore sling, but that's got quite a lot of ingredients, but it's probably one of the most famous gin ones. Or just doing things like um, with soda. So like um, a gin Ricky, which is like gin and soda. 
Um, that doesn't sound very nice. Yeah, but if you look, people who like gin like that kind yeah, of bitterness. Yeah, my problem is I, dr- I drink cocktails because I don't want to taste the alcohol. <laughs> the, the thing, you, you need to know your palate. Like, do you like sweets? Most people who like gin quite like bitter. And obviously, like, there are sweet gin yeah. cocktails, but generally things with gin in are like elderflower or with soda and Prosecco. So it kind of has, it's less sweet than other, like a pina colada yeah. is sweet. So people who drink that like sweet cocktails. People, generally people who like gin tend to go down the more bitter route with Fair. tonic and stuff like that. My favorite thing, it's really hard to say nice things to you when you're sat here, but my favorite thing about you is when you do, a, or even just cocktail bartending at weddings, is when they've got a drinks menu and there's, six cocktails that they've picked but someone comes over to the bar and you'll say to them do you want this or do you want something else you tell me what you like and and this is the difference between bartenders and mixologists is that you have the knowledge to be able to say to make any other drink that has those same ingredients and like mix and match them yeah I mean, that was instilled into me like by the guy who taught me to bartend and also the ethos of tgr fridays which i don't know if it is now but it was very much like if we have it we'll make it yeah um, and, and i always get frustrated at bars and it's again any place we ever go to and the service is crap it's like can i have this no you can't like i can see it over there yeah, so yeah. why would you not make it for me do you me? remember when we went to mcdonald's and we i wanted a vegetarian burger and i was like i don't want vegan cheese can i just have yeah, normal yeah. cheese yeah oh, i, my I God. Flat out had an argument with some bloke with that, well, yeah, you wanted a... I wanted the veggie burger, but normal veggie cheese. Veggie burger with regular cheese. Yeah. And he, fl- he was like, I can't do that because it has to be vegan because we're selling it as a vegan. I was like, okay, can I can I order the vegan cheese separately then? Just a slice of cheese. And he went, well, I know what you're going to do now. I was the normal like, cheese. I was like, come on, mate, I'm yeah. not, like, it's, it, there's no meat involved here. I think we'll be okay. Yeah. Anyway. But that's the kind of like that's the kind of service you just think you just leave such a sour taste in people's mouths. Or mouth. it annoys me when I go to a bar and they clearly don't know how to make any other drinks than what's on the thing. Yeah. That's what I don't like. Like, make me something. Mix it around a bit. Make yeah. me something I like. I've told you I like sweet stuff and I like vodka. Make me a drink. Yeah. But then it's it's it, it's time consuming. Most people who are bartenders, and this is general, aren't didn't go down as deep as I did. I wanted to be really good and I wanted to learn all the extra things and I wanted to do that. Like, if I was just you know, young again and just did it for the money, I would learn what's on the list and, yeah. and, and, and not move on. So, but like, you're right, there, there are levels to it. It's not necessarily like a bartender and a mixologist, but like there's a bartender and then there's a bartender. Like there's good ones I and agree. there's shit ones. I agree. How would you say that couples can know the, like, so people that book a venue and they've got a bar in there, quite, I would say what, I reckon 70% of wedding venues have the bar and that's, that's what you get. Yeah. How can people check what that bar is going to be like or the service of that bar is there something they can look at behind the bar to figure out if they're going to make good drinks i would 100 percent um don't do it in your show around like when you see the venue because the chances are they're going to try and impress you they're likely not to have put somebody on the bar that's going to try and impress you because they're not going to think about that but i would order like a coffee or something like that or a soft drink while whilst you're there yeah but when like the person who's showing you around isn't doing it just to kind of see the, a, the attitude of the person yeah. behind the bar um how they serve the drink are they going to be friendly those sort of things or if you live close to your venue and it's one of these venues that you can like if it's not just open for weddings go there and be like completely unannounced as in like yeah on an evening and have a drink and 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 actually experience it because they'll promise you the world for everything when you go to venues but especially with drink and we've learned this with the tours as well you will be promised the world and and what any event we've ever done the people who you're dealing with, the salespeople are always going to tell you they can do it. Yeah. But then on the day, you can't go back. Like I've worked like at weddings and venues with people who are like organizing stuff and you get there and you're like, well, how have you not planned for this? Like yeah. you've not got enough staff. You've not got the right stuff. And then it's you no go, ice. yeah, you go, oh, we'll just deal with it. But like, not really because there's people paying a load of money to yeah. be here. So I'll, I'll try and test it in some respect. Order a drink what, if you're doing a show around, but not from the person who's showing you around. I would go to the bar without even them even knowing. Yeah, yeah. And just experience it in that respect. And you'll get a taste of what it. I mean, it, you could get a bad person there and then a good person on, on your day, but you'll kind of get a feel for what it's going to be like. Is there stuff you can say if, so sometimes I'm trying to think of venues where there isn't anybody there and the person makes you, like when I used to do show rounds, there wasn't anyone on the bar, mm. I'd make their drink. Is there stuff they can, is like, can you tell by the look of a bar? Like, is it well stocked? Are you supposed to be looking at the amount of drinks are on there? It's hard to tell because you don't know what their setup is going to be like on the day. I, I would just ask and just say, look, how many bartenders are going to be on? Yeah. Like, you know what a good bar looks like and a rubbish bar looks like. So fr- from the front end, if you're having cocktails, make sure it doesn't look like a pub. Like yeah. if, if it's just like, if it's just a pump there and then some like dirty old pint glasses. Yeah, glasses. That, that's a bit of a red flag. You can look at that and be like, oh. That's what people could look for, the glasses. 
So if there's martini glass, like how many yeah. different cocktail glasses are there? But, but I wouldn't solely rely on that because they could always be ordering glasses in yeah. because they might not stock martini glasses. So like uh, you can get a vibe for it. I think a lot of people probably just don't think very much about it until it comes to their wedding day and they go, oh, yeah. what's going on here? So yeah. having that thought process and actually maybe even having a list of questions about the bar, like how many people are going to be on there? So, right. Give us five questions that couples should be asking at that show around point to find out if their bar is going to be good or not. I would start with how many staff do you have available to work on that night? If you're going to, there's no like set ratio to how many people guest wise are going to be there to how many staff should on, but you'll get a feel for like what sort of drinks you have. If it's cocktails, you're going to need, if there's a hundred guests, you're going to need at least two to three bartenders there. Yeah. If it's not cocktails, it's just pints and stuff like that, you might get away with two, but you need to know, are there going to be people running around collecting glassware, that sort of thing. So definitely ask that don't just rely on them to do it there at the end of the day you're not paying for those people directly so that, you know it's up to them to manage that as the venue but get an idea for it and if you've got concerns you can raise it yeah and i think if drink is very important to you you should be saying that at the start you should be saying to them look can you make a note on the system that if we book we would like an additional bar person because like you know if your couples if your family drink a lot like our group, we were like they're average drinkers like there's a few that will drink a lot but some weddings we go to and they say to us these people drink they drink like i think you know your crowd so yeah. i think you have to push back on it a little bit when they say oh there'll be enough no no no. i want a number of people and i want to be able to check on the day that that number of people are there yeah. um next question please um you're asked to have a look at the cocktail menu because a lot of the places aren't going to have it on show so ask to see is it what what's the menu going to be on the night a lot of the stuff i'd imagine is going to be talked through with the person that they're talking to at the venue anyway but just clarify because a lot of the times on the day things change like they you know got a different drinks menu than you thought like so many times i've worked at weddings where there's another bar there and they are completely unaware of what is happening on the day especially do with what what's on offer so don't be caught out by that don't be surprised by it ask what they're doing and ask if you can have any input on it like yeah. can yeah. i can i have this cocktail can i have that cocktail the chances are they're going to say yes if they're a half decent place and also i think sometimes asking if you can change the names of the cocktails so we did it for the tour. We had a Georgie and a Beth. They mm. were just normal cocktails. We just renamed them. So I guess checking with the venue if they're happy to rename a couple. Yeah. Is it annoying as a bartender for something to be called something different or do you just, do you learn? If you turn up on the night, just so a lot of, a lot of bar teams, there'll be somebody on that sets it up, maybe somebody else just before everything starts and then somebody will join halfway through the night it's annoying for the people who join halfway through the night because they've got no idea they just know <laughs> porn star martini is a porn star martini and yeah. somebody comes up and says can I have a beth and there's it's a 50 50 you might make the wrong one and that has happened <laughs> to us before yeah. um so it's normally people that turn up late so it, it's really hard you can't force them to communicate with their team members that's one thing with bar teams in particular because they're like could be agency staff they could be part-time staff a lot of them don't give a shit they just turn up and don't say that you're hurting people's hearts why you're making people scared no it's not to be scared. like no i wouldn't say it's, uh, yeah, but if you've got scared. agency staff and people that don't give a shit coming but that's why you asked the question about staff yeah because if, if they say it's agency staff you're like well my concern is are they gonna if know it's the agency staff i want more I want more of them. Yeah. Because even or, the people or, that are or, hiring agency staff don't know what kind of Or you say, look, it, like, I'm going to flag this now. Yeah. Like, if things go wrong, then you need to prepare to give me some money back. Or what, yeah, you know, yeah. Not that you want to put a negative spin before your wedding day, but like, Again, a, agency staff, don't get me wrong, some agency staff are really good. Yeah. Um, and I've worked with a, a, like a mixture, but the problem is you don't know you don't know what's going to happen. They may yeah. not have worked their bar before, or if they have, you know, they don't necessarily know where everything is or what the ingredients are to the cocktails that you have. So, it's it's just no it's just it's anticipating that it might be an issue and asking those questions before and then you can at least have it all in writing that you've asked yeah. these questions oh, well you're brian you're learning so much by just listening to the podcast i'm the not whole... i'm not certain that's from you yeah uh the getting it in writing is so important anything like when you've done a show round after you follow that up with an email and you're like just to clarify you told me there'll be four bartenders blah 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 blah, blah. when you then do that call the month before your wedding you're like cool just to check as per our first inquiry you told me four bartenders. And then they have to do it because you've literally got it right. Next question. Question number three to ask. Consider pricing. So if you're going to have a paid bar, obviously pricing is quite important. Likely to be a different price on a wedding day versus a normal day. Again, depending on the venue. If it's just a wedding venue, it's going to be the same prices all year round. Yeah. Like, is it going to, is it, 
unrealistic pricing some some yeah. places out in the middle of nowhere c- can charge what they want like we've been to what i mean, do you remember, remember uh, it we was went, years but... ago it was one of my friend's weddings y- yeah, like absolutely ridiculous pre-isla, so years ago and there was obviously the free drinks in the daytime and then a glass of prosecco was nine pounds yeah. and, and this, th- is, and this, this was is 10 years, years ago, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and we were like well no we can't drink like we li- yeah. the vibe is is or you you get pissed off then because you're like, yeah, yeah. I, like I can't afford to keep drinking that. i can buy i mean i appreciate when you go and get a glass of prosecco somewhere you're not thinking oh, i can get a bottle but you can literally go and get two, almost two bottles of prosecco for that amount where the f- are you getting prosecco from for... tesco it's like five six quid a bowl now yeah fair um yeah uh, in my head the pro- the cost of the drinks on the bar would put me off a venue yeah if they 100%. were extortionate and, and if they've got certain things are like again you know your audience if you know that you're your guests aren't really going to be too bothered about the price. Okay, cool. That's fine. But equally, you don't like, it does change the vibe. Yeah. Like I've worked, I've worked at wedding venues where most transactions that I have where it's a paid bar, they're like, how much? Yeah. And you're like, it just kind of puts, it puts it a weird vibe. Like you don't enjoy serving them very much because you know that it is expensive and they're like, it's painful for them to buy the drink. Yeah. And, and yeah, it just, it creates a bit of a, not that all the drinks need to be cheap because they don't. It needs to be the value and it, like, obviously the venue needs to make money. I get it. But have have a have a think about it because you don't want to be stung on the day when like because people that's the thing people remember like that wedding that we went to I mean I'm pretty sure we don't remember where it was but we the thing we remember from that wedding is how expensive yeah, that yeah. glass of prosecco was and not how amazing the wedding was or... yeah yeah and it's a shame because we had drinks all day long mm-hmm. like I have no issue with charging people for drinks after a certain point like genuinely if if drink isn't the most important thing to you they can buy their own drinks in the evening I've got no issue with that it's it's the cost of a round that you then have to look at and be like, it's literally going to cost them £100 for four drinks. Mm. Are they going to keep drinking or are they going to just stop drinking and the vibe stops? Maybe you don't want people to drink loads and that's fine, but it's knowing that stuff ahead of the wedding day. Question four, go. Um, Ask them about open and closing times when it comes to like, what time can people have cocktails? I'm assuming that you would have asked these questions beforehand and you've probably- No, this is the initial But have you put some like thought into- you know, do you want the cocktail or bar, the main bar to be open during, um, well, during the wedding breakfast? Do you want that? A lot of the times I'd recommend not to do that. I disagree. I totally disagree. I don't like wine. So what yeah. am I supposed to do? Just not drink anything. I'm happy to go, again, I'm happy to go and buy a drink. But if I just want a lemonade during the wedding breakfast, there's nothing I worse than not being It depends on the venue. I would say um, for a lot of the people that I talk to about this subject, it's like in a marquee somewhere. And you don't want to encourage people to stand up in the middle of a wedding breakfast all the time. And it creates, it creates like, it Pockets fragments, people, yeah. it, well, it just fragments the room. Like some people, the people who are going to buy drinks and there's always a group of like five, maybe even more that will just constantly get up and down and go to the bar. And it also means that like during speeches and stuff like that, they think, oh, I'm just going to get up and go get a drink. And as crazy as it sounds, that happens all, yeah. all the time. Yeah. Then, I would definitely shut the bar during speeches. Like in a perfect world, the like the, the some of the marquees we did last year it was the bar was closed the speeches were first and the bar then opened like soft open after the speeches so yeah. you couldn't get cocktails it was more just like if they wanted a beer or if they wanted a soft drink you could go to the bar and get yeah. it. it's just i just don't I think i think if you're in like a, if you're in a marquee as long as you're giving people drinks at every point like yeah they turn up they get some prosecco i don't know maybe a cocktail they've got buckets of beer they've got like at every point you don't want them to be thirsty so you can't be like oh you're not going to the bar but we're not giving you any alcohol. Yeah. There might be some red wine on the table, but if you don't drink red wine, yeah. then you're going to be annoyed. So it's it's thinking about that. And I know the whole day is not all about the guest. It's not. But it, like, if you want people to have a good time, if you think at every point, you, it doesn't have to be expensive either. Like bottled beer is cheap. Like you can just keep, if, yeah. to keep a guy happy generally on a, or, or, on a wedding day, if there's buckets of beer around and yeah. you can help yourself. And then put soft drinks in those buckets yeah. as well if you're really worried about people. Yeah. And um, some Prosecco. So yeah, ask ask about when that opens, what time potentially drinks are going to be served, and put your input in as to when you want that to happen. Um, and then on the flip side, think like when what what time's closing time? Because you think like as a bartender, from a bartender's perspective, whatever time that end time is, you're mentally closed half an hour before. Oh, you are like you're why? Thinking, because you've got to think about breaking the bar down, oh, closing okay. down, cleaning up. As in you're up. not done and switching it off. You're actually just trying. Well, to, get to it an extent, to I suppose you are. Like because if it's, if it's a long day and it's midnight. Yeah. At half 11, you're hoping that people wind down. Yeah. And then, so you can, you know, get out there by quarter past 12. Yeah, yeah, So ask when that final bit is and what time staff are going to be there till. If if you're, if they're rotated till half past 12 or one. Fine. 
it's irrelevant. Um, so it's kind of just asking what time it is, what time is last orders. You know, I've worked in a lot of marquee weddings where, like they said, if, if, depending on the vibe, if it's really like amazing and the pie atmosphere is there and there's a DJ on or whatever, and they want to go on for half an hour, is that something you're prepared to do? And I've, yeah. many times I've gone, yeah, it's yeah, fine. Yeah. Like, as long as I'm, you know, I don't have to be up at seven o'clock in the morning, I'm happy to do that. Obviously, they, you're going to have to pay for that. Yeah. Um, but it's worth knowing, is that an option? Yeah. And when you'd have to let them know that, like, when could you let them know? Can you let them know? Like, a marquee is I wouldn't do that. I mean, I worked one last year where I was supposed to finish at one and at <laughs> quarter past 12 or half past 12, the person's... This wasn't a wedding, by the way. The person, the, the, the event that I was doing, she, the lady who was paying me was like, can you stay till three? <laughs> And I was like, "How much?" Not... Well, she was prepared to pay <laughs> yeah, money, I know. so she was prepared to pay quite a lot of money, which was fine. Um, but even then, I was like, "I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but no, like I've got." Did you say no? Yeah. Why? I stayed. I think. I think I stayed on for another half an hour. Um, I stayed. I'd stayed on a bit longer, but it's, it was a long day. Yeah, it was. It a was a long, that. hard shift, and You're they were nice. Mate. But like, but again, if she, if she, if she said that to me when she booked me, you would have kept your mind. Have, I would have gone. There's a good chance I'm going to stay here later. Yeah. Um. And even if she, even though she incentivized me with money, <laughs> I was like, you know, I'd rather go to bed. So like, wow. it, so if you, if, if, um, if you ask that question early, this is more so of like, if you're getting in a bar company or a bar yeah, tender to come in, how flexible are they? How flexible are you going to be? And they may, they may just say in the beginning, oh yeah, we're really flexible. Yeah, and yeah. then on the night they go, no, we're not. Mm. Um, so you, it's all about asking these questions, communicating. And again, getting it in writing. Because if they say, yeah, we're, we're prepared to stay later you know on on an email yeah then they're going to be Bam. prepared to stay later. give it to your coordinator and then your coordinator goes no 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 yeah you no, said no, you're no. doing it um i i would get a feel for how much personalization they're prepared to put towards your drinks maybe you don't care maybe you don't want anything and you just want it as it comes but maybe you want things like drinks toppers or yeah. napkins but or like your own straw like all of these things have happened in the past um are they prepared to do that? Like, or yeah. do they have a standard that they, you know, so have to stick to? Yeah, I guess chain hotels and stuff like that might find it harder. We did have an issue with one of the tours where we wanted to put in like some glitter stuff mm. and they were like, we can't put it in because we don't have the allergy stuff for it. And I was like, oh, to be fair, like we, they'd said yes to like all the other stuff, but we didn't specifically say this. If we'd said beforehand, we could have got the allergy stuff for it. We could have been ready for it. But so it's just, I guess, knowing how far you can not push it, but like how yeah. much stuff can you do without them being like, we don't do any of that. Yeah. You can't buy all the stuff, take it the day before and be like, here's all our bar props. And they're like, no. The moral of the story is with, the, I mean, those are, there's more questions than that that you can ask. But like if, if drink is remotely important to you, just go in right from the beginning and tick those off. Because like I said, drinks tend to be an afterthought quite often. Yeah. Like the amount of Zoom calls I've had with people because they've like a couple of months away from their actual wedding. And they've not even thought about drink and maybe you've said something or they've seen something somewhere or they've gone to a shit wedding yeah. with bad bartenders and they've gone, I really don't want this to happen in my Cues wedding. Please, please, can you help me? Uh. Please, can you give me, like, can you give us some advice to do this? So it's often the last thing you think about because you just, it's, it's, it's easy, isn't it? Yeah. You think you just go to the bar and somebody pulls a pint or, you know, opens a beer or makes a gin and tonic or whatever. But it, there is, there is potentially more to it. It can be like, if, if that's all you want for your wedding that's all good and potentially that will be fine but if you want you know if you want to use the opportunity with drinks to wow your guests a little bit yeah then you need to think i about think it. drinks is an easy way for people like we the feedback we had from our wedding is because it's so expensive to buy cocktails when you're out mm. to get them for free at yeah. a wedding is to get them for free at a wedding but also to be able to have a conversation so, with a bartender yeah. to be like this is what i, dr I like oh try yeah. this like is and mind blowing and at a relatively low cost as well yeah like, like i said we i mean we didn't have a huge number of guests like maybe what 60, 80 80 60 in the night, in a day, 90 at night like, yeah. yeah so not a huge amount and between two and two and a half grand's worth of alcohol which we've still got loads left at home yeah. managed to get us through all of that yeah and then yeah we and paid, they drank and, and we paid a we paid you know a bartender who i used to work with a premium because he's a bloody good bartender yeah. and that, that's where you get that's that's the reason it worked if we if we bought all the alcohol in and got some average joe bartender yeah, yeah. who's like an agency staff they wouldn't just, be able to they literally wouldn't be able to handle no, it but it, 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 it wasn't it wasn't just about serving the drinks and i talk to people about this all the time it's not just opening a bottle of beer and serving it yes you can do that and you can pay somebody minimum wage do that yeah and if that's what you want cool Fine. crack on but you're not nobody's gonna leave that wedding going 
best you know drink. what the yeah. drinks are really good that bartender knew his stuff and like it's not even because they, they love cocktails or whatever but because they, they weren't expecting it they've gone to weddings before and it's been generally either neutral or a negative experience yeah and actually you can go from a wedding with li- with a bit of thought behind it and a little bit of budget again it doesn't have to be a huge amount to get a decent bartender if if you know your venue allows or if you're in a marquee or whatever and actually people can leave with a really positive experience i agree um i like it when you talk about drinks makes me remember why i fell in love with you because <laughs> <laughs> i can make cocktails no but you just i appreciate your level of service and the problem is you're now telling hundreds of thousands of people that so brian does still work weddings bar weddings but he not a huge number just a bartender that's literally yeah, yeah. comes as a bartender tells you what to bring tells you what quantities to do you can book consultation calls like those sort of things they go sold you a little bit there right <laughs> but like i cannot express the difference between bartenders and bartenders yeah. but not even like this isn't even a sales pitch for me like if, if there's somebody else if you want good bartenders like don't just approach mobile bar companies like it's the, the problem is the reason why i wanted to not create a business because it's not really a business i'm only doing a few weddings a year and mm. i don't want to get to the point i'm doing loads you've got time honey you've the got reason i left to... bartending was for that very reason <laughs> um but like really try and speak to somebody like i don't know maybe even a bar that you go to yeah. often or have gone to previously um i question that though brian that statement that you're about to make because the, there is a big difference between bars and wedding bars yeah you gotta know weddings yeah, but the first wedding I ever worked from bar, I was just as good. Yeah, but you didn't understand the wedding side of it as much. The the yeah, but you're, you're eighty ha- drinks need to be ready at this point. Yeah, yeah, sure. Like that sort of thing. I think but you to need find a, a mix, to find maybe. a to find a like a really competent cocktail bartender that understands weddings. I wouldn't say that's necessarily something that you're yeah. going. Uh, all of those people that I know have gone and created their own mobile bar company. Fair. Um, and then I've got to charge you a premium because it's good money to be made. Yeah. In, I mean, I literally built a bar once don't, to do a mobile bar. Don't company. even get me. This is one of the biggest arguments we ever had is when just before Brian joined the police and it was probably, how old was Isla? Like we hated it. This is the year we hated each other. He's like, I'm going to gonna make a bar company. And I was like, right. Okay. I was like, I thought you joined the police. I might make a bar company. Right. Okay. Should we wait until you find out about the police? No, no, no. Go to buy, build a bar. Paid how much for a bar? About two grand I two thousand pounds we didn't have any money by the way this is, we, <laughs> we were we were buying our new house living with my dad hating everything buying a bar right would you do whatever you want buys the bar <laughs> where's the bar brian it's it's currently gathering dust in our garage and how many times did you use that bar brian not even once and why is that because i joined the police yeah, yeah. Fucking idiot, mate. yeah. anyway <laughs> okay thanks for that but the, the point the moral of the story is like that's what I, I potentially would have gone down that yeah. avenue because there's good money to be made because you can charge an absolute premium and people will pay it because... But you mean a premium on the drinks. You don't mean... You don't mean as, as in bartenders well, charge a, a premium. there's two options. You either I will turn up with my bar and staff it and you as a minimum spend of a couple grand. Yeah. Um, or, and they make the drinks. Or I turn up for free or, you know, maybe a couple of hundred pounds or whatever and it's a paid bar. Yeah. In which case I'll make even more money. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so from, from a, like if you're getting married understand that you are paying a premium to have somebody turn up with a bar yeah but then the but the other one is if they want to bring all their own drinks you pay a, i would still suggest to pay a premium for the bartenders yeah that but, makes such but, a difference yeah sure but you're going to pay so like if 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 you're in a marquee or whatever it will 100 percent be cheaper to get somebody like me not it doesn't have to <laughs> be me but somebody like Say me so? to pay just pay me hourly yeah yeah and then i will tell you what to buy yeah and then you, you, and then you even if you hide your own mobile bar for like 100 200 quid or whatever for the day yeah. it's still less you, it's more you, effort you don't get, get me wrong no yeah it is but you you could you could pro- I would, i'd say you could probably halve your cost really yeah um, well half your cost you but all bar. give the experience to your guests yeah. like tenfold yeah but but you need to get glasses ice somewhere to wash stuff like yeah. it's, it comes with it a does, lot of yeah, stuff yeah, it, but it does but it, it depends might, yeah, yeah the 100%. rewards from it but then there's some people who want like um, the big red bus or whatever it's called yeah like, that was cool some people like that and some people like you know, like um, horse boxes and stuff yeah. like, so if, if you like that then cool then, then then do it yeah Um, but it just depends on what you want I personally when you've got good sort of numbers I like multiple bars yeah. like I like it if we're speaking to people and they're like they drink a lot I will say to my couples like just have a bottle beer bar like even if you get people to pay for it, here's yeah. just like is a quick place to go to. They don't want to queue when everyone's getting cocktails. Send them over there, or if you're doing a free bar, put keep the beers out. Get the mm. bottles of beer in the what are they call in the tub things. Yeah. 
the bar team will keep icing it and then people can just help themselves tie a bottle opener to it and they can just yeah. crack the only on thing with that. that is you need you need the staff to do it because you they'll run out quickly yeah you need so staff that, that, that is 100 percent the benefit of having something like a horse box turn up a bar that kind of perks like like like, like um, parks outside the front of the venue mm. and there's potentially a bar inside doing basic stuff and then if they want cocktails they can go outside like but they'd have to work together surely they have to be the same company not necessarily i wouldn't turn up as a outside bar team first of all the venue wouldn't let it turn up because they're then taking money from them mm. and i wouldn't turn up if i was a horse box if there's another bar inside because i want the money yeah there's ones that do both though you'd have to speak to different companies yeah but anyway brian what is your favorite drink to make uh, an old fashioned. Why? What is it? Because it requires a bit of skill. It's a really simple drink. So it's bourbon, uh, Angostura bitters, and sugar syrup. Is this the manly drink? It's being sexist. Um, yeah. It, well, it's, it's bourbon. It's, it just tastes like pure whiskey, really. But it requires you've got to stir it for a certain period of time, and then the garnish is an orange. You got to if you 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 can do a really shit one, and you can do a really good one, and the the, the balance between those two. Like if you if you want to test to see if somebody is an experienced cocktail bartender. Ask them to make a, an old-fashioned and watch them. So maybe if you go into your venue, mm. you get them to make you an old-fashioned. Yeah. And you watch. Yeah. What are we watching for? Um, well, you can always... Confidence is probably the biggest thing. Like, bartending... Like, when I used to teach bartenders, like, the, the most important thing is having that confidence. Like, I've... The number of times I've worked behind a bar and somebody's come up and ordered a drink that I have no clue how to make, <laughs> it, but they wouldn't... What? You know, you know every drink. I literally tell people you know every drink. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, but there's. Have like, you faked it to me? No, no. So like, I fake stuff too. So if you, if you've been to Tenerife on your all inclusive holiday, <laughs> yeah. and they had some cocktail on their menu, that like there's thousands, oh, right, there's thousands yeah. of cocktails. Yeah. Like you can't you can't know every single one. There's going to be like some randomly named one. Yeah. Um, and. You can just go, yeah, yeah. And then if you have the ability to then not know that you've just looked that recipe up <laughs> yeah. and make it. Yeah. Like I've genuinely, I've done that loads of times and they had no idea. And they went away thinking, oh, that bartender really knows his stuff, which yeah. which I did. I knew enough to, like I had a rough idea of what was in it. But if you can pull it up on your phone or if, you, or if like, you know, guard the back into the fridge quickly and have a look. Yeah. Like, I don't mind that. I've never minded like anyone who I've ever taught. If I go to a bar and somebody did that, but it's about the confidence of the bartender mm. who, that you've got the drink from. Fair. Um, so the question is an underrated cocktail, but what I want you to give me is a cocktail, like say if people are doing their signature cocktails, what's an underrated one that could be used that's really cool there? Probably the most underrated cocktail, and this is in cocktail bars and also like weddings and venues and stuff, but I always recommend people to do it and try it, um, is sours or like a version of sours, not apple sours. <laughs> That just took me I back saw, to I saw your face butlers. then. No, I'm not, no, not, not the shit shots that you get for like three quid in test tubes. Um, so a sour yeah. is essentially any any spirit or mixer that you mix with Oh, like with whiskey lemon. sours? Yeah, whiskey sour, amaretto sour, all that sort of thing. It is like people who have tried it love it. And a lot of people have, get put off by it because you can use egg whites in it. So it's like really foamy, <laughs> but it looks really pretty. And it's it's it always a crowd pleaser. Like once people have never like have had it for the first time, the majority of the time they love it. Interesting. I have heard people order sours before. I don't think I've ever tried one. Is it a bit much like for it. me? No, it's, it's le- well. You can have whatever you want. Yeah, I do like lemon. So like whatever your spirit is, you can just do a spirit, lemon juice, sugar, and egg white, and then you put bitters on top. And you can make a cool pattern with, with it on top. Is the egg white weird? Which, why so I don't think many people would know that things. What what is a porn star martini got egg white? No. What makes a foam on that then? Passion fruit juice or passion fruit puree. So what one would we have all tried that's got egg white in? Unless you've had sours, probably you haven't. Well, I thought I drank egg white ones all the time because people like you can smell it. Sours. Oh, okay. All right. Um, Recommend a pink cocktail for a summer wedding reception. A summer wedding reception. Pink cocktail. Um, It pains me to say it, but something like a woo-woo or a sexy that Why do you hate a woo-woo so much? It's the shittest drink ever to Why? make for a bartender. But I you can spice like... it up. You can make it better. Um, so like, so woo-woo is vodka, peach schnapps, so archers. Um, and it's cra- it's and like and it's your juice. 15-year-old girl drink. Yeah. But you can use those same ingredients and normally you just put it together rather than shaking it. But if you shake it, it again puts a bit of foam on top. The foam makes any drink look better. It makes it look more professional. So you could, you could do that or you could put a bit of orange juice in it which makes it a sex on the beach. So on mm-hmm. top, so it's like pink and a bit yeah. of orange on top. 
Um, and then, I mean, there's tons of cocktails. There's ones, as long as you have a touch of grenadine in something. So you can have like a tequila sunrise. So I love a tequila sunrise. Tequila, orange, yeah. grenadine. Um, but there's literally like hundreds of drinks you can choose from that have like a dash of grenadine and it'll make it pink. Thank you. Someone said, what's the name of your bar company? Um, just a bartender. Okay. It's not really a company. It's an Instagram Don't page, worry. Don't so worry. Go, go and follow it. If you DM me on there. DM me. When hiring a bar company, what are any immediate red flags to look out for? I think you'll get a vibe for me in the ones I've spoken to down before is you can tell if they're trying to like money grab. Like I appreciate they're all in there. They're all in it f- to make a profit as every business is. Um, but like look at terms and conditions and stuff like that. And when they talk to you, you'll get a real sense of like, or our minimum spend is this. And it, all the questions they come back to you with, all their stipulations are all about um, money. the spend. Yeah. And that's one thing that I've noticed with a lot of bar companies. And for me, that's a red flag because in a service-based company, you should be focusing on the service clearly. So it should all, it should be about the service and it should be, yeah, I'm going to charge you appropriately for that, but it should be in a contract or whatever. This is the cost. This is what you need to minimum spend. But quite often the focus is almost outwardly about how much money they need to spend. So yeah. for me, that's a big red flag. Okay. Um, free bar how can we encourage the guests not to take the piss so what we talked about earlier about a bit like staggering when things are available yeah so quite often like if people say to me that like they've got people who are heavy drinkers it's generally like rugby lot that are like gonna smash shots and cocktails early on and they're concerned that by like 8 p.m 7 p.m people are going to be thrown out yeah um so quite often people say i don't want cocktails to be available until 8 p.m and that's yeah. when the party starts in which case like by 10 o'clock maybe the people are going to be really drunk which is cool um or people don't want shots at all because yep. i don't know about you but the only time i ever get really drunk <laughs> is when i have shots yeah but they're fun though uh yeah yeah but it could be that shots don't start until 10 because yeah again you remember like me and beth talk about it a lot where you like, blame the suppliers are oh, the bar you would happily if a bride and groom had said to you we don't want shots until 10 mm. you've got no issue saying to the people coming to the bar sorry we, we're not allowed to do shots until 10 yeah. oh why not because we're not doing shots till 10 it doesn't look like it's the couple yeah yeah, yeah no definitely but like be you know your guests more than anybody else so like if there are going to be some people taking the piss then yeah then yeah you can stagger it in my head the perfect day with drinks is ceremony cocktails drinks reception like something easy like the hugos like april spritz that sort of vibe then sit down and there's like beer buckets and wine and prosecco and soft drinks like around and then finish the food and there's a cocktail hour his and hers cocktails hers and hers cocktails his and his cocktails dogs cocktails whatever you want to do like signature two for that hour <laughs> bar is open like you can get other stuff if you want to but that's that bit and then cocktails then yeah. throughout the evening that's like to me that's the perfect the, wedding like, that is that's probably the template that most people use but to go, back to, to, to go back to the question you had a minute ago about not getting too drunk you can also be strategic about what cocktails you offer or what drinks you offer in the beginning so like if you're choosing beers choose a beer that's not a high percentage alcohol by volume give me a beer give me a perfect well, beer like, for drinks well, it's not a, there isn't a perfect one but if you're concerned about that like you have a coarse light which is four percent rather yeah. than a peroni which is 5.1 percent okay so like you can you can go well this is the beer that we have available yeah. and you're kind of purposely doing it because you know people aren't going to get as drunk or pims which is not very alcoholic that's a great one to be like rather than you know porn star martinis and margaritas in the beginning yes people people are likely to get pissed and likely yes. people who no, tend to just drink at events are going to get drunk real quick so you can be strategic about it. fair hi brian <laughs> <laughs> so Hello. many bar related questions do you think a free bar is important uh i, I do i do yeah but then like i'm not going to judge somebody who doesn't have an open bar because maybe they haven't got the budget for it yeah um because at the end of the day it is it is like it's their day and it's about them um I think but I'm I think, rubbing off on him. But it, no, but as in like if if it does annoy me if you, you put a load of money into other things and then you Hot, like shit drinks. Yeah, like clearly with a, like you could have just spent a grand less there, and, and this and is like this is like hour. weddings that are like spend a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, it's not my place to judge them for that, but I kind of think you, this would have been better placed by people not having to like have a pain point of getting your card out and think and paying because yeah pay you got to remember paid bars slow everything down for bartenders yeah, yeah, yeah. like massively surely the you can the amount of people you can serve in an hour is double on a free bar at least yeah because the, the there's no depend, working depending out. on where you are as well like 
the Wi-Fi doesn't work properly, so so the payment takes a couple of times to go through, and at the busiest times, it kind of jams up. Like honestly, Wi-Fi is the biggest bane ever. Like, because if you're doing it in a marquee yeah. in a field somewhere, or you're at a venue that's a bit out of the way, and people that, don't have cash anymore. No, and you have to go. You have to take. You have to. You're basically making. You're doing two transactions every time you with somebody you make the drink you go and put it into a till or where yeah. are you doing it and then you've got to do the mental math then you've got to come over and then you've got to take the money you go back to the till and then so like this it, it, think about the timings if you've got if you're having a lot of people there appreciate the free bar is going to cost a lot of money but it, it, think about the time it's going yeah. to take for these drinks to be made i agree i to me and again even just stuff we learned from the tour if you can't afford to do all of the free drinks so can you so now beth's not here and she can't fight back her <laughs> thing i don't like putting money behind the bar because to me the first two hours is great and then suddenly at 9 12 p.m you suddenly have to start paying for drinks and you're like what like it was free yeah. and there's no fairness to it in and again we know where i'm at with drink tokens but to me, what we did at the tour is that there were the free drinks like you'd get at a wedding. And then rather than doing a tab and stuff like that, we had Prosecco that we took round. We had shots that we took round. Like, does that work better than having money behind the bar? Um, I'm not for or against it, to be honest. So like, stop it. Stop. Give me answers, Brian. This is unfiltered gr- groom and bride i don't i don't have that strong of an opinion like it would be annoying if you're the person that gets pushed over the edge of the tab and yeah. you have to pay um but there's like the one thing i would say about it is there's always one dickhead yeah that takes the piss with the with the bar tab yeah and they are like they, maybe they don't even know there is a limit or if they do they're going to be like well i might as well make the most of this and get a bottle of something yeah, or, yeah, yeah. or order doubles constantly like if you're assuming everyone's going to be like oh i'm just gonna not take the piss you're wrong there's always gonna there's be always one, one. And it's normally like Uncle Dave, the, the partner of your cousin or something like yeah, that. So, yeah. like, so who doesn't really so give so shit far about removed you? Yeah, from yeah. It. Um, so that's definitely something to think about. But it's not going to be fairly distributed. So the idea of going around with prosecco or shots or whatever, at least you have control or the bar has control of like if you're carrying around a tray of three bottles worth of prosecco, you can dot it around the room. I at just the same feel time. like it's more fun. Yeah. I feel like it was so interactive, like going around with shots yeah. and involving people all having the Prosecco pong yeah. or no, beer pong. No, I do agree. I think I think ra- rather than doing the tab, just put 500 quid elsewhere into the drinks I like agree. by doing that. Cocktail hour. Yeah. 100%. Um, <laughs> what is it like when you work together at an event? Right, don't lie here either. What do you mean? What's it like when we work together at an event? We work well together. So. We work amazingly together. Yeah. Well, we're both we're both hard workers, so like we just crack on with it. Like it's just working in hospitality. You just you're you're prepared to just be on your feet all day and work yeah. hard. So like, yeah, yes. we're a, we're a bit of a dream team at a wedding. I'm not gonna lie, only because yeah. I don't have to worry. Like that's one element I don't need to worry about, and I can just say to you, get that bar ready. We need this at this point, and I don't have to then come back and think about you. But equally, I can then make everything happen. This end of it, it's just it's wonderful when you got good supplies. It's wonderful. Yeah. Um. What is the easiest cocktail to make? The easiest cocktail to yeah, make. Yeah, so going back to the kind of not sure about what the venue are like. What's one that is very difficult? So we did kind of did Pims and Hugo's. What's a You can fuck up a Hugo. Yes. Someone messaged us a bitch from a bride about messing up a Hugo. I don't, it's difficult to though. Not really, because it's ratios. Um if uh, I, I would just if I, in all honesty, if you're if you're at a venue that you're worried about the drinks, either try and get a bartender in. I can see why they wouldn't want you to do that. But Tell people what you're doing soon. Well, I'm doing that. Because what are you doing, Brian? They're going to hate me, <laughs> but I have to go into a wedding venue and make the cocktails because they clearly can't be trusted to do it. So they, I'm going to walk in and they're going to hate me straight away. It was a, and then this and then this, so this happened at the tour where we were like in Cardiff. We were like, oh, can, can Brian, somebody, one of the guys that was running it and we will do an episode about Cardiff and Manchester. They're coming when Beth has a voice again. <laughs> but they were like, oh, do you want, I can't remember who they said, do you want to go behind the bar and make a drink? And I was like, no, I don't want to, but can Brian? And the, <laughs> the poor bartenders showed you where the thing is and then you start looking, you're, you're trying to figure out where everything she is. She basically held my hand behind it was the bar. So, but she, it was like, like rightfully, yeah, and she was yeah, like, yeah. here's the vodka. And then Brian picked up the vodka, threw it behind his back and caught it in, a, in the other hand and she went, okay, I'll let you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In, in my defence, I wasn't trying to be a cocky dickhead. They, no, but like, I wanted I was, you to be a cocky dickhead. I was dickhead. being filmed yeah, yeah, whilst yeah, yeah. I was doing it. So like I had to do something. I wanted the um, show. That was part of it. But, yeah, but no, she I, didn't know you knew drinks. She didn't know, no. <laughs> she didn't, um, 
sorry, sorry. So yeah, soon you're going to a wedding venue. Yeah. The bride has hired you, pays your hourly rate, and you come. But you, I, it'll it'll take. It's well, the same I've as when I work with venues. I did that at that three day event that we did yeah, last mad. year. It's funnier and, when and they there's hate always us. there's always a little bit of friction, and and I would have like if I worked at a venue and. It, it basically says we don't trust you. And, and, and it, it couldn't be more blatant than but, saying I've got somebody else in. But on my wedding day, I am not yeah. risking whether you care if I trust you or not. I don't care. Yeah. So I would sell it as in like, we want a particular thing and we know that this person can deliver it. So th- like- They hate to help. We're not trying to say that you can't do it, but yeah. we really want, it's important for us to have this one element. So this is why I've done this. I love that. Um, I literally love that. It's going to be brilliant. <laughs> yeah because i mean for the guests i think it will be it but will then... be brilliant and t- honestly the the staff there will appreciate you after 10 minutes because it's quick and you know it's a different skill it's a different skill set um batch cocktail recipes we are doing these with beer wine etc for the bar that opens at 7 p.m that night what could they batch make a cocktail yeah batch. um i mean pretty much anything espresso martini is really easy to batch you well, just, in a, you could do you could do five kilners of espresso martini and they'd be all right. Yeah, you just need to mix it. I mean, you would want to shake it before so you can pour it all into a into a like a, a shaker and just shake it with some ice and then it's ready to go. Whoa, 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 whoa! Prior to putting them in the kilner, or you batch it into the kilner you and then pour it, it in, kilner, shake it, and give pour it a it. stir before, and then you put it into the. So actual you still need shaker. a bartender. Yeah. Okay. There's loads of things that you can do, like a pims, where it's it's, easy, it's ready to go from from a kilner jar but they're, they're never going to be the nice cocktails like you can't do it with the porn star martini because it requires it to be shaken so that it's got a bit of texture in it so there's loads of things like things like woo woos things that just re- are just like basically spirit and mixer cocktails yeah you can do that with anything how do you feel about cocktails in a can um i wouldn't personally ever order one <laughs> If there was, so I did a wedding, I talked about it before here actually, where they had those big fridges mm. and there was no bar team. And I was like, guys, you're stressing me out, blah, blah, blah. And they were like, the most chilled people ever. And they were like, just, it will work with our guests. And I was like, I fully trust you. And they had loads of cans of everything, cocktails, beer, like everything. And it worked really well. However, it's a, it, it's just a different drink. A porn star in a can is different to a porn star martini in a glass, in my opinion, it just depends which well, yeah, size you are. It's never going to be as good. Like it, it, it just won't be as good. They were quite yummy. But if, um, if, if the whole if drink isn't super important and canned cocktails are, you know, part of your story, then yeah, cool, crack on with it. It's never going to be as good. But if you're on a budget, it's a, it's a great compromise. It's a, yeah, it's a compromise. Yeah. What can you do on the table instead of wine? We both hate wine. Prosecco. Um, like shots of some degree like you could have for Spirit your wedding mixer. you could have a bottle of tequila rose on there and people can go you know throughout and could do that is that um, risky Will they be it's, not, it's, it's not it's not a very strong drink so it'd be fine yeah Um. It, it again has to make sense to you wine is just it, it's the most common thing to have with your meal which is why traditionally it's, it's there I can't imagine nobody at your wedding is going to like wine we only put red wine on our tables though and we had white wine available at the bar yeah, because it was winter. Oh, if it was in summer, we would have had a rosé or white and then red behind the bar. Fair. Um, so to answer the question, I wouldn't, there isn't really like a, I'm trying to think I of think weddings that I've done before. I think Prosecco can work because everyone seems to like Prosecco. You could put the spirit and some mixers, but it's not going to look nice mm. on the table, is it? Or you just don't put stuff, the only problem is if you don't put stuff on the tables, you'll get people going to the bar. Yeah, the only other thing I can think of that would might make sense is having a bucket or like a bathtub nearby, not on the actual table, but like close. So like if you've got 10 tables, you have three or four. Yeah. And within that, maybe there's a one bottle of white wine because you know, yeah. just in case they want it. But then it's got bottled beers and soft drinks and stuff like that because you want it, you want to mix. And it, it doesn't clutter the table and also it's within easy reach. So What's the girl equivalent of beer? Uh, I would say wine or gin and tonic. Okay, just checking. How do you manage a help yourself bar? How to stop people going crazy? <laughs> you can't. I, I I don't like help yourself bars. The only help yourself bar I've ever seen that worked was those fridges because yeah. there was no glassware. You just, you drank it out of the can and they were like 
surfer cool yeah. guys like yeah, it, yeah, yeah. it was really good but you can't have a help yourself bar with but glasses. i have massive ocd about making sure it's clean on the bar top and stuff like that so like yeah. if i was at that wedding it would fr- it, because not everybody's going to be considerate yeah. of where they leave stuff and, and how much they pour they're going to turn up to it and they'd be like well, what happens if one row empties in the fridge like so like again if it makes sense to you then do it but i'm i don't, I don't like them okay you're getting bolder as we go through this right i'm enjoying it um so you kind of touched on this but i want to just go back to it a way to do espresso martinis easy we have to provide our own bar should we do canned but you're saying kilners is a better option than canned but you can't pour straight from kilner so so what there's nobody there to make the drink well currently would you say have some people there yeah just pay even if it's one person to to be there and they can batch it so like i always tell people the espresso martinis you can just literally just use like kenko coffee make a load of it refrigerate it um and then you could if you wanted to you could mix in the alcohol and mm. sugar into that and then it's literally just give it a little swirl in a bottle and pour it straight into the into the glass but again not having it manned <laughs> what happens when it runs out like who, yeah I who's know. dealing with that like when there's a kiln jar there it's got maybe 20 cocktails in it when that runs out everyone's gonna go now what yeah it a, and then it becomes out. a domino effect of yeah okay well then the bride or groom or somebody in the in the bridal party is gonna have to be like well i'm gonna have to do it now like, you should have just paid somebody yeah yeah minimum wage at least it's one of those kinds like it. things that a bar will ruin the yeah, mood yeah. and you'll be like i wish i, I literally just wish and, I paid and it doesn't that. get better because once and even when there is a staffed bar if things start going wrong it doesn't get better it just gets <laughs> continuously wrong so unless you're like if it's so busy you run out of stuff within half an hour and they're obviously the kind of people who are going to continue drinking if you're not prepared for that with stock and people it's not getting better because in an hour's time it's going to be it, yeah. people are going to get more pissed off okay i want more quick fire questions from you this is gonna we were supposed to talk about several things here and you've just talked about cocktails <laughs> okay really asked you about cocktails what is the perfect way to create champagne bellinis as a welcome drink for our guests perfect way to create it yeah well you just put peach puree but what do they bubbles. do put all the peach puree do you make it in a kilner do you put the peach puree in no, first no, no, after no. who no you line up all the glasses and then put the puree at the bottom and then top it up two minutes before people walk up thank you and it's important it's not a long time before pet hate when they start making drinks half an hour before people walk. it takes i'd rather if you're pouring all the welcome drinks i'd rather you people will stood there for two seconds yeah. whilst you filled up a glass and it's completely fresh than give them flat bellinis Ugh. um our venue are charging 70 pound corkage for spirits is that a lot to bring as much spirits as you want well no i guess per spirit yeah, it's fucking loads. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you do that? Don't do that. Corkage is so difficult because if you want what you want, it costs so much money. It's so difficult. They're like in a club in London or something. That's, just, that's, extortionate. that's I reckon that's pretty normal for things. I mean, no, I would not do that. Any advice on a DIY bar in a teepee? Yeah, get a mobile bar, either a company. Or staff. Or you get a bar, the TP company might have a bar. If not, you can hire a bar. You mean a physical bar? A physical bar. Yeah. And then get staff yeah. and and make it your own. Pick what cocktails you want, buy the alcohol. Because I also, I'm not against, if people want to do DIY bars, I'm not against you getting, just like, just do a Prosecco and beer bar. Yeah. Like if you're really, if you really don't want to do all these different drinks and all these different ideas and things like that, two drinks. There's just, your drinks. If you don't want to hire drinks, a I don't bar care. top and a couple of fridges yeah. and at least one person to be there. And it's not going to cost you that much money. Agree. Okay, I'm coming away from drinks now. Do you enjoy my daily trick questions on you as much as everybody else does? No. I, I, I was thinking <laughs> about this the other day. Like, does it seem staged? Because I think if people are watching it, like, have they planned? But it's really not. You do just, at the most annoying times. <laughs> For anyone that doesn't watch my stories. The most annoying times. There's this girl on TikTok where she's like, today, ask your man if, uh, to call you the B word. If he calls you anything other than beautiful, I think you should start a fight. So I keep doing them to Brian. And genuinely, we don't talk about them beforehand. And I have to try and post them on my stories and then run upstairs quickly so that he doesn't see them on my stories. Yeah, but like one of the day, you turn around, <laughs> I was literally going to sleep. I was like 10 minutes into falling asleep. And then you start recording. And they're funny. People love mm, them. For them, maybe. <laughs> um, 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 that's only like my O. What, how to make the groom feel special on the wedding day? I talked to somebody about this actually at the tour. Somebody asked me this question. probably might be the same person. Um, find find what's important to them. Like for me, it was having cigar and whiskey 
because I, yep. but I did I don't even know where the idea came from but I, no, I, I wanted no that was not <laughs> you take credit for fucking everything it's unreal um, I wanted to like have something that was separate for um, everybody that went to my stag do yeah. and it was like 20 minutes where we all had our own time and that made me feel like I had like an input on the day I mean I had inputs on other elements of the day as well but that was kind of like a bit for me so like whatever whatever your you know your partner or your groom thing whatever their thing is they might not have anything in which case just i don't know maybe try and involve them in stuff yeah um but yeah ask them outright is there something that you think is important to you and then try and like weave into the day thank you did it feel funny when people were recognizing you and knew your name at the tour <laughs> so brian acts like he doesn't doesn't like it he's like nah, nah i hate it. i, was I just, do hate fuck it. off and then when it comes to the thing he's like I'll go stand by the front door. I'll welcome people. Oh, will you, Brian? <laughs> Where's Brian? Yeah, oh, he's at the front door welcoming that as everyone. Me wanting... No, 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 no. Um, oh my I, God, it's I, Brian. I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't be famous. I like, I like to just crack on. Says anything. the guy that's trying to get hundred thousand followers on TikTok. Well, I've been, I've been recognised. <laughs> you got recognised at the tour. No, no, but not even through that. Like, what? well, yeah, the guy behind the bar. Yeah, he was like, when Brian finished doing the bar stuff, he's like are you frugal spender? And I was like, yeah, I do drinks as well. <laughs> and I, I hate it because like, I don't, I, you honestly, don't I, hate it. That's no, not I, true. I, I don't know how famous people deal with it because like, imagine, and obviously this is not a level that I'm likely to ever be at, but like, if you're walking to like, go shopping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you've got, in your, con- is somebody here going to recognize who I am? I can think of nothing worse. Okay. Did Brian enjoy the honeymoon? Yes. Put a longer pause on that. Well, it was a yes or no question. Yeah, so say yes quicker. Open questions. That was a closed question. Did Brian enjoy the honeymoon? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> what was your favourite part of the honeymoon? Um, not the karaoke. Oh, oh, I wanted you to do it. Like, you know me well enough to know karaoke is my yeah, worst but I, nightmare. I, my job is to push you in our, like, I'm the pusher, you're there's the a, there's a limit. Backer. Me going on stage when I can't sing, <laughs> singing in front of people is not... Oh, you'll not, never see them again. Why is it matter? Until the next morning for breakfast. <laughs> we're stuck on a Do ship. on the last day. <laughs> yes, I enjoyed it. I had it very much. What Thank bit you. What did you like apart from karaoke? Dolphins is pretty cool. Okay. I thought turtles were better. You didn't enjoy the turtles as much though because you couldn't breathe through the snorkel. Swallowing seawater. <laughs> um, any top tips for saving for a wedding and staying in budget? Yes. We, we covered this previously and it seems to go with your personal finance, the thing that I talk about the most, but you need to first of all figure out what you can afford mm. um i don't like that so i wouldn't recommend you going and getting stuff on a credit card um and then writing an actual budget a realistic and honest budget rather than going yeah yeah this is kind of what i want to spend but because it's my wedding day i'll do whatever <laughs> which is what a lot of people do do um set a limit and you both have to be on board with it because there's going to be likely to be one person in the relationship that's more of a spender and then the other person that's more tight. So you need to find what the amount is and you both agree that that is what you're going to do. Fair. Would you have done any part of the wedding differently? I think, I'm pretty sure you asked, again, asked me this question last time and I think it was um, saxophone. Yeah, was that, or was that mine? No, I think I said it, yeah. I, I, so, you just take credit for everything, Brian. Typical well, Brian. Well, no, because actually at the etiquette party was the first time I ever went somewhere where somebody was actually doing sax like in the crowd and stuff I don't think I'd ever seen it done like that before and I thought yeah that was really cool and then anytime in all the tours saxophone was insane so like I think if you want a party vibe saxophone is is, like that would have been cool to have in between the band sets maybe have like a sax guy or girl I wish in hindsight we'd gone on to later as well we should have trusted our gut and known that people would have wanted to stay till late. We were, because we were in the middle of nowhere and we had to pick an end time, we were like, there's nothing, we'd rather it finish early on a high than drag it out and it'd be awkward. I wish we'd gone till at least one. Yeah, but I was also knackered. Oh, you're such a baby. Well, not like Danny, she was fast asleep. (laughs) We balanced stuff on her head. If you didn't have Isla, when would you have wanted to have children? I I don't think I would have ever, like... uh, What? No, it was in like... I can't see a time in our relationship had we not had a child that I would have gone, now is the time to do it. It would, probably would have been after marriage. Oh, I just let I know that you didn't want to then. 
No, no, I'm glad it happened that way. But no, no, no what I'm <laughs> no, saying I is agree. in like... It's I, awkward I, to go, are what, we ready? I, I couldn't tell you what would have clicked in my head that to go, okay, now we need to try and have a baby. Right. It probably would have been about the time that we either got married or I proposed to you because that would have been like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Like, I'm going to grow up now. But we were forced to grow up by having a child, which I think was for us the better way around of doing it. Yeah, fair. Um, <laughs> I don't want this to get you hate like it did last time you were on an episode. <laughs> but blokes who don't get involved in wedding planning why it's both people's day i'm loving it this is a this is a guy that's wrote this i just like is stereotypically it, some people like guys it's just, marketed to women like it's our fault as much as it is i just you just need to accept that there are like some inherent genetic differences between men and women and one of them is for whatever reason marriage and planning marriage and thinking about marriage women tend to do it more than men you can't get some hate on that episode you do you bro um what's one thing you think is key to supporting your fiance during wedding planning can i give you one i'm good um if you're not interested just fake it fake it set an alarm on your phone and every friday it goes and says ask your partner about the wedding Ding, ding, ding. Are you excited for blah 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 like just co- like there was nothing more i wanted to do than talk about it so for me having a partner that would then be like oh by the way where are we at with xyz yeah like, that's that's nice you don't seem interested yeah but there's, in there's just so many factors to it like if you're busy at work and stuff like that and we left a lot of our planning to the last minute no we didn't don't tell people that that's not true we planned a lot of stuff and then, and then we did nothing because we were so busy yeah um so no, it's like, all the little stuff. It's hard. No, no, no. I, no, I, I definitely agree. Like, but, but I think also finding the bits that are interesting to the other person. Like, you were interested in a lot of things at the wedding that it was not even that I wasn't interested in. I just wasn't didn't have that much of an opinion about. So, like, when you talk to me about, it, I'm like, yeah, genuinely, like, whatever you want to do, that's cool. Let's yeah. do that. Whereas when you talk to me about cocktails and stuff, like that, I was like, okay, cool. This is the thing. So, find what input they want to have. It goes back to like the question before about how do you like make them feel special on the day. Finding out what the thing is that yeah. they are passionate about and then you can i don't even say to them can you plan that or can you or, or can we plan that together whatever yeah. you know whatever <laughs> you see <laughs> you can no see, i'm you, joking you're, you're making this assumption that guys can't plan stuff <laughs> no no no. i'm not making an assumption that guys can't plan stuff i'm making an assumption that you can't plan stuff no you just <laughs> control freak um okay there are so many questions on here for you that it it almost makes me want you to come on another episode but just i don't do it, know just do it on stories we could do some on stories but also people want to crack on with their day but tbc if beth is even better for the next episode like i'm worried yeah i mean otherwise I'll... you will have to come back and we will have to ask more questions <laughs> this would be awkward i do want to end on a bitch from a bride um and you i don't know how much you're gonna be able to answer it but i just want you to be here to listen to me okay okay Bitches from a bride. Hi, ladies. First of all, just want to say thank you for the podcast. Started listening in December from the beginning and have now smashed my way all through them all. Very upset. I have to wait weekly for the new ones. I've got so many help, tips, and extras from me. Love it. So, my bitch from a bride. Our wedding is no children. There will be just three kids. One of them is our son, and then two cousins coming from overseas um, who are there for a two week holiday. Everyone's been really good with this. Even someone that had an ill baby that they said could come has now sorted it out and getting a sitter, blah, 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 blah. However, The best man is being very demanding with this and not understanding it at all. He has three children and is expecting all of them to come. My partner, (laughs) this is where you come in. My partner is not chasing him about this and is basically chicken out saying that the bride has decided that there's no kids for the wedding. It was a joint decision um, and that she's putting their foot down. This is now affecting the wedding planning as we have three months to go and we have no idea if the kids are coming or not. I have said that you can bring one of the children to try and make it easier for childcare but I'm asking my partner to ask him and nothing's happening. I don't want to contact him as then I seem like a bitch, but I need to sort out the numbers for accommodation. What do I do? What's the problem? Why can't... Because you, you, t- you don't want to make it awkward. I get Boys it. can't talk to each other like that. Yeah. It's, it... And why do you blame us? Well, it's the same reason Beth says blame the venue for everything. Oh, okay. Because you pass in the book. <laughs> it's exactly the same thing. If you can't blame your partner... Well, yeah, I can see why he would do it because it makes it less awkward for him. And it's kind of like, they probably both know that it's not just that. But I mean, we have a unique, we, we had a similar-ish situation at our wedding. Um, yeah. I, it, is, it is difficult, but I would, 
I would just to save you the stress of the day and we had stresses in the day from potentially not being more honest with people yeah um just be honest and just say look we actually just don't want kids there so like yeah. hopefully it doesn't make his best man not want to come to the wedding anymore but what happens if it does because that happens well, he's obviously a shit mate isn't he? <laughs> okay yeah but it's, it's true and i but i didn't want to annoy people that were close to the wedding see, we party had problems before. prior to the wedding in the so run-up to it and why. i said to you do stuff and you were like i don't want to rock the boat that's what i'm saying because, i know because and do you regret it, it uh yes i know no because i didn't like it would have ruined my day more if i didn't have somebody who was meant like quite close to the wedding yeah fair. that would have caused me way more stress like is it that big of a deal if they have three kids there if it is then they need to just f- it literally doubles do the it. amount of kids that are there yeah and Put it wouldn't be fair down. to other people who have booked um, yeah childcare and stuff just I can't, if it's his best man surely he can talk to him openly about it she definitely shouldn't get involved because she'll she will be the well i just don't think it's fair that typically the girl has to get involved and then it is us that are bridezilla and blah 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 blah. when actually when you go home and shut the doors the guy is like oh i really don't want any kids there and i'm like oh not you but <laughs> yeah no but it's, that's what i mean like she shouldn't do it because then then he needs to step up and what's your message to to grooms out there <laughs> you look so sad <laughs> uh d- don't don't be a bitch and just and be honest don't be a little bitch can you don't, say it better don't, like into the camera don't be a little bitch tell these people, tell the people stick the up for your because in hindsight you'll wish you did and hindsight you gotta also, go back with your wife but also make it a balanced decision don't do it out of like, oh, we're gonna, this is annoying. Think afterwards, is it worth potentially annoying them before the wedding or them not turning up or whatever? But then also you don't want to regret it afterwards. So weigh up the options. All right. Did you enjoy coming on the podcast again? Yeah, it was good. Why I'll, is your I'll... voice so monotone? I'm going to do it again. Are you ready? Did you enjoy coming on the podcast? It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, hopefully, I, I've got to listen to this back and edit I know it. you've got to edit it. Don't cut any, anything and make it sound like I've not done stuff. We'll see. <laughs> um, hopefully next week, Beth will be back, but I'm going to need you all to cross your fingers because she's like, for Beth not to cut. Yeah, yeah, she's not in a good place. She's ill. Yeah, yeah. Like, she's not dying, just FYI. From the start of this, yeah. it was very dramatic. Yeah, she's, she's just, she's just got a bit of flu. Weak. <laughs> Um, next week, hopefully, we will be talking all about the Manchester and Cardiff tours because they were insane. I mean, I feel a little bit ill from them. I'm still ill from them, but mm-hmm. they were just so cool that I can't wait to talk about them. I'm excited. Brian, say what you want to say at the end of the episode. Um, well, uh, thinking back, there's been a good few episodes since you guys have said this. Okay, well, you say it. Um, Hit the floor is yours. We are very close to a thousand reviews on Spotify now. Oh, that was terrible. Um, <laughs> I think as of today, it was like just over 900. So if you do listen on Spotify, please leave a five-star review. That you would can't, be... Well, you can't ask them to leave five stars. That sounds weird. Just well, leave don't, a review. Don't leave a review if it's not going to be five stars. <laughs> don't like, listen. Don't, yeah, if it's not <laughs> worth five stars, you shouldn't be listening to the podcast. Um, that would be... It really helps it reach more people. And, subscribe, and like, comment. If you're watching comment. this on YouTube, subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> um, leave a comment like the video see how awkward this is and you want us to do it at the it's end not, of every video absolutely not this yes is, it this is. is my time yeah. <laughs> um if you if you listen on itunes if you could leave like a review a written review and five stars on there that'd be awesome too anyone that mentions brian in a review i'm gonna give him what do you want <laughs> you're gonna give me something yeah it's like a reward at a, you you did hospitality like every time your name gets mentioned on a review you get something what do you want um some cake slice of you cake you don't like cake uh, like a chicken chicken breast uh half chicken jerk, half chicken half jerk chicken cooked by you you don't want me to cook it yeah that's true <laughs> i will buy you for every time brian's name is mentioned on a review i will buy you a half chicken <laughs> so as they rack up we'll end up with like five whole chickens in the fridge well, no, you've got to like cook it in. No, I don't want to do that. I just oh, okay. Um, um, anyway. That thank you so much fine. for listening. Like, share, review, all of that jazz. Thank you so much for dealing with Brian on this episode. Thank you to me for speaking with him, even though we now have to go home together and carry on speaking. Um, but Beth, I hope you appreciate this. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye. Love you, bye.